You just look at all the different things that have come, you know, uh, in Winter Garden, trying to maintain that family atmosphere. Right. It's a place where you want to bring your family, you want to bring the kids, and, you know, things to do. As a community, we need to start having conversations together that matter. Who are we now? Who were we then? And who are we going to be in the future? Let's slow down to think and discuss. This is Afterthought. In tonight's episode, I talked to Mayor John Reese. Now we talk a little bit about his personal life, about the city, and we also talk about some past mayors, including Mayor Ray Spears. Now after the filming of this particular episode, Mayor Ray Spears passed away. In addition to this, a few years ago in 2017, Mayor Quisenberry passed away. Now, in lieu of their recent passings, tonight's episode is dedicated to these two great men of our community, Mayor Spears and Mayor Quisenberry. May they rest in peace, and may we be always grateful for their service to the city. Hello, and welcome to Afterthought. My name is Austin Arthur, and this is a show where we focus on our history, our heritage, and our community. Tonight, I have a very honorable guest, the mayor of our beautiful city, Winter Garden, John Reese. Mr. Mayor, welcome. Well, thank you for having me. Graduated from the University of Florida in 1971 with a BS degree in business administration. Then you went on Rollins College with a master's degree in accounting. And then you served as president and COO of the Silver Springs Citrus Company, city commissioner. You were one of the city commissioners starting in 1986. Correct. So that's a quarter century of service to the people. So let me start by saying thank you for oh, your service. Thank you. Come from the love of our city. Exactly. Now, I think that when we talk about your position as mayor, an important position, so many people in our city don't really know our mayor, and that's why I'm so excited to sit down with you. They don't, they don't know who you are, we you know what you do, and I think it's important. I think people, they have a, an urge to learn more about who their city is, because our city, Winter Garden, is very unique in that people are passionate about it. And it's not just our citizens, it's actually the people that come through here. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of people that come through our city every day who just can't get enough of it. Well, you're their mayor too, because they have such an investment in our city. So I want to start by not talking about the mayor, but talking about the man. You know, who is John Reese? Tell us a little bit about your background, your history, and how it all went down in your life. <laughs> <laughs> well, our family goes back to, I guess, is my great great aunt. Uh, actually, had a house in Grove out where West Orange High School is. And when her husband died, she built the house in 1926 on Main Street across from what was then Winter Garden Elementary School. So after the war, then my dad moved down here. So, you know, we were born and raised here. And, uh, you know, as was my wife, um, you know, we went, as you said, we went to schools here in Winter Garden, Winter Garden Elementary, Diller Street, and Lakeview for six years. As my wife, we were both born and raised in First Baptist Church. You know, got married before uh, my junior year at University of Florida. So we went off to Gainesville and uh, her family was all here too. So. When uh, we graduated, uh, I didn't have to decide where I was going to live and work. Um, he was uh, told me we'd start fixing up the house that he built in 1948 when he and his wife got married, and that's where we were going to live. So we came right, you know, right back to Winter Garden, and um, you know, she taught school here at Diller Street Winter Garden Elementary for 44 years. Um, I, as you mentioned, Silver Springs started there in 1975. What is that? 44 years I was there. Wow. So. You know, we're very consistent in everything, I think, that what we do. Um, we've been blessed our whole life. Uh, as you mentioned, our education. Um, University of Florida growing up, that was the place we wanted to go, and off we went. And uh, my wife is a very strong force, ensuring that I uh, went to class and studied. You know, I think God looked at me as a 15-year-old and said, oh, I think you're going to need help your whole life. So he gave me that cute little girl. <laughs> so uh, we've had a long, uh, enjoyable life together. And we're very blessed for that. So, you know, coming back to Winter Garden and we were only away four years, I think you look at it and we were always active. We started having children and I got involved in coaching, you know, Little League baseball, YMCA basketball, Pop Warner football. Uh, then I got on all the boards. 
Uh, then started getting interested in the city because really the parents back then did all the work. Right. The city didn't do what we do today. So, you, you know, I started getting interested in the city and what direction it was going. So wanting to have a family-friendly community, I guess, is the best way of putting it. So we've just always grown up here. We've always lived here and uh, always cherished our community. Was your father or, or mother in public service at all growing My, up? Yeah, my mother was um, housewife, stayed home. My mm -hmm. father was principal at uh, Lakeview High School. Lakeview High School principal. And wow. then he uh, went to Memorial and was principal there. So my dad was principal. He was there from after the war until 1960. Mm. The, in fact, the year I was going to Lakeview, he left. I'm not sure that had any, anything to do with it, but uh, he, then he went over to Memorial. So Now, yes. during the war, was he able to stay and, and still be principal, or did he— No, during, he wasn't here during the war. He had— he wasn't. Uh, just graduated from Ohio State. Oh, I see. Where they thought I was going because where he and Mama went. So, uh, no, he was in the Army, right. rose to the rank of major. Um, probably would have stayed in the Army if it wasn't for, you know, my Mama and having a, oh, an older right? sister. Yeah. But I'm glad he didn't. <laughs> they they urged him to, to come back home. Yes. So you then, so basically you didn't come into public service from maybe your, your family's heritage or anything like this, a long line, but because, like you said, you loved the city, you wanted to help to retain its original um, beauty and heritage, I guess. Would that be yeah, fair to say? It is, because when we grew up, it was four or 5,000 people. It was like wow. that until 1990. So you knew about everybody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as kids, we're no different. I mean, we, we ran all over town. And, right. And, uh, you know, if you did something wrong, your parents knew it before you got home. And I guess I just like that atmosphere, and our boys could do that. But Bob Barber was mayor then, and he, I was doing a lot of things in the city. He put me on the planning and zoning board. We started a recreation board because we were big into that, and he put me on that and as chairman and stuff. And then he came to me and said, you ought to run for commission. And quite honestly, I was 37, and I go, I'm not old enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not, you know, I shouldn't do it yet. But he convinced me to run. And the one thing I always remember about running, I, I ran against Mr. Theo Graham, and mm -hmm. that was his district. And I knocked on the door of Mr. Hagen, was talking to him, and he says, why are you running in, in Mr. Graham's district? And I explained, I'm not running against Mr. Graham, I'm running for the seat because, you know, I want to have input into the direction of the city. And as I walked off, he yelled, he said, well, I'll vote for you, at least you'll have one vote. <laughs> so I never kind of, you know, forgot, forgot Mr. Hagen. And was running. he right? Was that the one vote that time, or did you win the first I time? Won. Oh, he did. Yeah. So he was already in the seat for for quite some time. Yeah, Mr. Graham was. Yeah. Yeah. And then I served later. He ran another district, and so I served on the same commission with Mr. Graham too. And was there some animosity no, between you? No. Or? Yeah. I, I I I never ran against a person. Right. Like you said, you ran I, for the seat, not against the person. Whether Mr. Qu I only really ran against a couple of people: Mr. Graham the first time, and Mr. Quisenberry when I ran mm -hmm. for mayor. That's Mr. really mayor. about it. And so they were friends of mine. So it wasn't. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I ran to get Mr. Quisenberry, his grandkids were in my wife's class <laughs> at school. <laughs> but it, I never ran against the person. I just ran for the seat because I wanted to have my input. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what people, I think, like about small town politics, because often I think that it is like that. Not everywhere, but that has to be nurtured. It has to be retained. It doesn't exist on its own that way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I know that you've seen some of these elections locally here in Winter Garden. They haven't been that way. No. You know, there's been some, you know, not nastiness, but close mm -hmm. here and there. But as a community, we need to start talking to each other and suppressing those inner evils. Start to be the community that we Winter Garden always was. I think, you know, if they would just sit there and say, here's what I stand for. Here's what I want to do. Not talk about what the other guy did wrong or what you did. Just just talk about your platform and what how you feel, exactly. And respect the other person's you know opinions and right. and on, on that. And uh, I think it would be, you know, I just think it'd be a lot better world. Yeah. Start building yourself up. Stop tearing down other people. Mm -hmm. Essentially, yeah. Our area, Winter Garden, has it changed over time? Has it grown? Oh, we're, yeah, we're probably five times the size. Uh, you know, when we grew up. If you came to the corner of Dillard Street and 50, that was all Orange Grove. So once you left the downtown, it was Orange Groves. Um, packing houses. We had more packing houses in Winter Garden than any other uh, city, I think, in the state. Um, so it was a very compact, small community that was based on agriculture. Mm -hmm. Everything was based around agriculture. And what really changed that were the freezes of 83, 85, 87, and then, of course, 
the last killer of Christmas of 89. That just wiped out the citrus. And when it did, that changed Winter Garden. Right. You know, f- forever. Yeah. And for quite a while, Winter Garden was basically in a, in a recession of its own, right? I would say something like that. The, the, As it tried to decide where it was going to go and in what direction, it, it hit it. You know, you saw people moving from downtown, moving out to Highway 50. So then downtown become desolate, basically. I mean, we could walk downtown and you could walk down the middle of the street and, right. you know, probably in the late 80s and early 90s. There was still quite a few business down here when our boys grew up in the mm-hmm. late 70s and early 80s because they'd ride their bikes down all the time to McClung's or the drugstore and these places. But it just slowly, everything left downtown. Mm-hmm. And uh, it really became uh, almost almost a ghost town in a sense. Right. Tell us a little bit about more on when did it start to grow its, its territory, essentially? In the 90s. And then so after the freezes and stuff, after we were everything, coming back. it really started because up until then the citrus, you know, and, and the farmers they they kept their agriculture. That's mm-hmm. what they've done their whole lives. So it really didn't start until after after that. Right. You know, Disney had a little bit of an impact, but not that great in mm-hmm. that time period because you yeah. know Disney came and opened in what seventy one. Right. So it was a lot later for those those impacts really hit the city of Winter Garden. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's talk a little bit now about the mayor. What does the mayor do? What is his actual influence on what happens? What are your responsibilities? What is your mayor schedule kind of look like? Tell us all about the mayor. Well, I think the influence depends on the person. Mm. So I think some mayors are going to have more influence than others. It just depends on the person, their ideas. I guess I like liken it to a private thing, the CEO and the COO. The mayor is more like the CEO and the commission. We set and pass ordinances, resolutions. Uh, we set the budget. Uh, we approve um, uh, in uh, debt, indebtedness. Um, we hire the city manager, the city clerk, the city attorney, and the city auditor. The rest of the city staff and all the department heads um, are hired and fired by the city manager. Mm-hmm. The city manager runs the day-to-day operations. Right. Now, as far as the schedule, you know, the, the mayor obviously sets and runs, he'll run the city uh, commission meetings. Um, people look for the mayor to be more involved as far as outside activities and so forth. So it's, it's the time that you want to spend on it, really. You can spend 20 hours a week. You can spend 25 hours a week. In all honesty, you can spend three hours a week. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you know, how involved in what you want to do. And and how much of that, how much with regard to talks with the county that might be necessary, other cities surrounding us, how much of that is the mayor? How much of that is the city manager or another person? A lot of the, from the day-to-day operations and in, in lining is, is the city manager. Right. And we're blessed with a great city manager. Mike Blahoffer. Yes. He does a fantastic job in, in the staff. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do a fantastic job. Um the mayor does go into the meetings. We will have meetings with, you know, our county commissioners. We'll have meetings with, you know, city of Okoy, um, you know, uh, city of Oakland, city of Windermere, particularly the ones on the west side. Mm-hmm. So, yes, you know, you will get in, in that. They're not, you know, every month. They're when right. needed. When it comes to something like maybe executive authority, you know, um, or even there's been a lot of talk these days about executive orders and this kind of thing. Would that therefore come from the city manager if one was to happen? Does he have that kind of power? Does the mayor have that kind of power? Where does that sort of thing lie? It's really a city manager, but it has to be passed by the city commission. Everything has to be passed by the city commission. On something like that, yes. We give him permission or we give him the authority. You know, he has the authority to run the day-to-day operations. But Mm -hmm. if you come to to certain things, yes, we'll come to the city commission. It'll be at at the uh, will of the city commission, which means you need three votes. Right. And obviously, I think the mayor's position, I'm not talking about me personally, I'm talking about the mayor's position. I think the mayor's position over time typically is a little more involved and probably has a little bit more, I don't want to say power, but a little more influence. It does. does Because you're running citywide. 
Right. You're not running in one district with 7,000 people, you know, or 8,000. You're running citywide of 48,000. Yeah, because as mayor, you're also a commissioner. Mm -hmm. But unlike the other commissioners there, what you're alluding to is that there are certain districts within Winter Garden. Right. You're a commissioner of over the whole Winter Garden. Is that right. correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I have to look at the whole the entire community right and what's best for our entire community yes. and who with regard to the commissioners who sets the agenda for what you guys go through and what you guys are planning on and city manager mm -hmm. and each department head knows what's coming up on it then they'll run it by us and you know we want something on there we put it if we don't want something on there it can be strict mm -hmm. stricken from the uh, mm -hmm. the agenda so your analogy seems to be a pretty good one with ceo versus coo mm -hmm. between the two different yes. positions yeah, but essentially, if you want something done in Winter Garden, it's all about the commissioners. You have to go through that route. Correct. Very good. Well, you know, I mean, if it's day-to-day -day operations, the city manager do it, but if there's anything that's right. outside of his authority, yeah, he comes to the city commission. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And how long he's been commissioner, he's been, uh, sorry, city manager, I think since 2005, is that right? About 2005. He was so, a finance director before, and that's where I got to know Mike. I see. When I was on the commission, commissioner, Mike was a finance director, finance background, Mm -hmm. I always mm -hmm. had questions about the uh, the budget and things, so I would Hollis would say, you know, go talk to Mike. Right. So I, I, that's where I got to, you know, really know Mike. And so you guys have a long-standing and good working relationship. Yes, I awesome. think so. I think we respect each other's opinions and mm -hmm. thoughts, and you know, mm -hmm. sometimes we both come from things from a different way, but we sit mm -hmm. and and go through it and got to run the city. Got to you guys yep. got to work together. Yes, sir. And where does our where does Winter Garden's budget mainly come from? What kind of things are? What does the the budget look like? Well, let's talk a little <laughs> bit about that. You know, the people want to know. <laughs> you're, you're up my alley now. Silver Springs, we did about four budgets a year. So I, uh, yeah. you know, they laugh it's at in me. your blood at this point. They, they laugh at me. I'd rather sit there and go through the budget than I had to watch TV or do other things. Um, <laughs> well, don't give us the long form. The, uh, give us the skinny. The That's budget, all they need. Yeah, the budget is about two hundred and fifty <laughs> pages. And they start on it you know, probably in May to have it ready for us, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in, in September. So it's quite a process from all the department heads. Uh, Winter Garden's total budget now, uh, counting everything, is probably approaching $100 million. Uh, the general fund, you know, $59 million. But most of the funds from the, from the general budget is going to come from your ad valorem taxes or property taxes. Mm -hmm. It's going to come from the half cent uh, sales tax, you know, from the state and then state revenue uh, sharing funds. Then it'll also come from your license and fees of people that, you know, do things inside uh, Winter Garden. Then on your other side, your enterprise fund, you know, all that run funds come from the uh, fees that you charge for water, sewer, et cetera. What were some of the challenges that you had when you were entering as mayor? You know, it was, we talked about 2008. Mm -hmm. So that was an interesting time in the country. What was Winter Garden looking like in that time? The city of Winter Garden actually was, you know, was running well mm -hmm. at the time. You, you know, I mean, it, was, it wasn't, it wasn't a bankrupt city. It wasn't a city that was, you know, it, it was running well. What do you, what do you attribute that to? When cities across the country were in deep trouble during that time period in 2008, 2009, what do you attribute to Winter Garden kind of staying out of that whole mess? I think it's a combination of um, your city staff, your city manager, and your city commission. Uh, understanding what good development is, um, developments that are, that are not. Uh, understanding what your you can afford to do and what you cannot afford to do. Right. And I think a balanced you know, budget. Yeah, well, you you have to have a balanced budget, mm -hmm. and you try not to go into your reserves. Uh, you know, we like to have we're close to thirty percent. You know, in reserves right now, which is close to where we want to be. Not counting some properties that we own, so we're over it if you count the uh, the value of those, the market value. So I think that was probably the main. You know, and has Winter Garden had a balanced budget? Every year. Every single year. Every single year. In fact, at the end of the year, typically our revenues will exceed our expenditures by a small amount. Wow. As we build up our, I want, I, I may be up, but I want to say when I started that week, we had a fund balance of maybe four million. We're getting closer to fifteen. Wow. So, but it, our budget's grown too. Exactly. Yeah. Of course. So you know, you you can't just look at the absolute growth. It's the you know the percentage. That's right. mm -hmm. So uh, tell us about how Winter Garden looked back then because. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day telling them that we were going to chat. He's like, well, ask him about the striking changes in Winter Garden <laughs> since he's been mayor. So tell us about those striking changes. There, there's, there has been. And by the way, that's, a, that's not to say it's a negative thing. I think it's actually a positive. So yeah. please. It depends sometimes on who you ask. Yeah, right. Of course. <laughs> I, uh, 
you know, I have learned one thing. All these, all these things are run by my wife because she is great at these type of things. But I think striking changes, you know, they had started City Hall, but it was completed, you know, about then. And then you look at the theater, you look at the uh, pavilion, you look at the uh, splash pad, which I threw in was my, my wife spent three years, four years trying to get me to build that uh, <laughs> you know, in the garden, and the kids love it because we'd see it in Sarasota, St. Pete, and other places. Yeah. So I uh, love it. So you had a lot to do with pushing for that. Pushing for that. Um, the, you know, the pavilion and the farmer's market, the uh, parking garage, uh, this, the the continual streetscape and the work that Laura mm-hmm. and, and her people do there just make downtown gorgeous. Beautiful. The Magic Gym, the Maxi Center, you just look at all the different things that have come, you know, uh, in Winter Garden. I, I just think there, you know, just a lot of things. I think we've done it trying to maintain that family atmosphere. Right. It's a place where you want to bring your family, you want to bring the kids. And, you know, things to do, uh, you know, the um, music downtown every Friday night. Yep. Um, we brought in more restaurants. So I think it's just, you know, being up. we started the golf carts. And who would have known that I had a guy come by the other day and, you know, he wanted to buy my house. And I, and I said, well, you know, really, you can't afford it. And he goes, well, you don't know how much money I got. And I said, it doesn't matter. And my wife <laughs> right. would tell. But he goes, are you in the golf cart district? Yeah, you know, that's the big thing. So yeah. I think a lot of those things have, uh, you know, added um, Tucker Ranch, mm-hmm. you know, out there as we continue the uh, green space. We just bought the uh, house and apartments there at Newton Park. So now you got from Bradford Park all the way around to the sewer plant. Winter Garden owns all of that. Someday right. that's going to be redeveloped into a beautiful park. Wow. Everything down there. Wow. So there's just, you know, I think a. Just a lot of things it's have turned happened. into a very vibrant community mm-hmm. with, I mean, just so much. And that's why people love it. And you have the downtown atmosphere and then you have the, the Fowlers, you know, over there. You have the grow, the, the mall, the totally different vibe, but still the same community. You know, I think that's what makes Winter Garden so unique. You really have all ends of the spectrum. Yeah, Fowler's yeah. Grove has added so much to this. Uh, it was all orange groves before. That was all orange groves. Yeah. You know, when you went over the turnpike, that road stopped. It was a dirt road into the Orange Grove. You know, I think there's just been a lot of things that have happened. And as we look at the downtown, you know, you're going to go from Park to Dillard, you know, from Newell to to, uh, Smith Street. And the idea is to keep it no more than three stories anywhere. And, uh, you know, that's a battle. Yeah, people want to fight that. Well, sure. I mean, if you own it, you can go up. You can, you know, you can make more money. No more than three stories. I think a lot of people appreciate that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, really changes the city when you have these high buildings. It and does. Stuff. And we want it to. We just want to keep that uh, that atmosphere. With that, how do you and, and Mike and the city in general? What's your mindset for making decisions and pushing a plan and and deciding on the path for you know whether it be renovations in the city or just general development? What kind of what do you think about when you're making these kind of decisions? Well. I think we look down and look at what the long range uh, benefits to the city of Winter Garden would be. Um, you can sit here today and approve a development, be it residential, commercial, and it can bring some tax revenue into your city immediately. Mm-hmm. But what we worry about, what we talk about, what we think about constantly is what is this going to mean to our city 10, 20, 30 years down the road? Uh, the last thing I think we want is for anyone to ride around town 20 years day and want to know why did they do this, you know, they shouldn't have, or this was a bad development. So our city staff spends a lot of time on that. Mike and I spend a lot of time talking about this and understanding that we want a good quality development here that's going to be a benefit for our city not going to be an eyesore and it's not going to be a drag on our city finances so we spend a lot of time with that and it, yes it does slow some some uh development down but mm-hmm. the long term i think it's going to be better for our city both aesthetically and financially so tell us you mentioned a little bit about tucker oaks mm-hmm. or, or tucker ranch rather um but tell us a little bit about that what's going on there what is the west orange uh country club that everybody sees you know right there on avalon road when you're driving right go through the turnpike yep. uh, over the pass and then you'll see this just this arch that's been there i think forever right yep what, what is that all about tell, <laughs> tell us what's going on there yeah that's right down from where my wife grew up that was the country club well it wasn't her time but during her daddy and mama time mm. back there that was gone when we came along 
But there, there was a country club by, back in there that they had uh, started, I don't know, in the 20s and 30s, and then, uh, you know, it bankrupt and went away. The arch stayed, so we saved the arch, trying to decide how to renovate it without spending, you know, several hundred thousand dollars right. and what to do with it. But we, from the Tuckers that were out there, um, uh, we bought 209 acres. Wow. Uh, and it was, our, we were always out to them. That was... For them to sell that and not sell development and everything, mm-hmm. we appreciate that immensely. So we were able to get that 209 acres from the uh, to the Tuckers. And with that, it's going to be more rural. You're going to have a campground out there for um, not individuals so much, but for groups. Right. And we're going to have the boat ramp. You can put your canoes and stuff in and do that. Uh, you're going to end up having a farm out there. You're going to have paths. You're going to have trails. Then we'd like to do a kitchen out there for you know, for cooking, showing how to do healthy cooking and, and all that sort. So that's going to be a nice um, green space you know, for our residents. So after maybe a couple of years from now, the whole vision the whole thing should, should be, be all ready. Yes, sir. That's going to be exciting. Now with that, though, you know, it's bringing more people, more people. we got the, ho- the hospital, more people. Hotel. Yes. What's the plan with the hotel? Where are we at with the hotel? Yeah, I ask that about every month. You <laughs> ask it. <laughs> I ask it every month. We call it. Who are you where, asking? Where are you? Everybody I can find uh, that has to do with a hotel. No, they still plan on the. We now we're talking. We got two different ones we'll talk about. Okay. The one that is downtown, where I call where the old Florida Power Building used to be, that is coming. That is past the city. And when you say boutique, what is this term, boutique hotel? What is this? Mean? It's the group. He was with uh, Rich Carlton, mm-hmm. and so he and a couple of his, you know, uh, associates from Rich Carlton went off and decided they would do boutique or smaller hotels. Mm-hmm. And so they don't do the 200, 300 rooms. You know, they do a, well, they like it a little bit bigger than what we did. But uh, what, would, what did we do? Uh, three, four, 68 rooms. Oh, 68. Yeah, 68, yeah. 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 they would. They would okay. like. You know, they would like a, a bigger. Sure. Hotel naturally. Well, I'll, they would have liked more than four stories. Sure, and, they would yeah. like the bigger. And, and I, I would have too if I was doing this. Right. But you know, we once again we wanted to fit into our, our downtown. Yes. They were very high on that location because they wanted their guests when they pull in to be able to walk downtown. Right. And uh, well, be beautiful. You know, be able to, to you know experience that. Mm-hmm. So there, it's going to be uh, hopefully a fairly high end, uh, nice hotel. Yeah. So we don't. It sounds like. With you and all the follow-up calls, we don't really have a, a date projection. It's we just, do not have a date. It's just it's coming. It's coming, and I am believe me, every call I ask one wants a date. Also, <laughs> now what about though? You know, a lot of people are concerned with the parking. You guys did mm-hmm. an amazing job with the garage, but people say it fills up. You know, and big. I don't know if that's true. Are people okay. just? We'll talk about that. Say yeah. Tell me. Okay, okay go ahead. We um <laughs> and, and it does a couple of times, but we uh-huh. went out and we took pictures of it. Uh, I want to say every hour, all during the week, including mm-hmm. weekends. Yes, it could fill up during the farmer's market. Right. Typically, though, the top floor was open. Mm-hmm. And so what we did with the hotel was, okay, we're going to do all valley parking, and you're going to get the top floor of the hotel right. And for that. Now, speaking of that, we all know we're going to continue to need parking downtown. When you go down Main Street, North Main, uh, where uh, – Bert Valdez has his, those warehouses, and that was the printing shop and everything. We're trying to uh, acquire that. Then what we'll do is we'll make street parking, surface parking there. We will brick Main Street through there, put in the decorative street lamps, mm-hmm. make that a flat parking service. Then when we need it, we'll build another parking garage there. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so the, the idea is to have parking in different locations of your city, different sides of the street, right. to help the businesses all up and down help so it's flow. not everybody parking at one location. Exactly. So, somebody told me that there was this slang slur term against our city at one point. They called it uh, winter garbage. (laughs) (laughs) And I was surprised to hear that, you know, and I think that it's just about that whole revitalization of winter garden, how it went through that down period, you know, um, and it came back, came back strong. Tell us a little bit about that process and and how, how much were you instrumental in that? What was coming before? Walk us through it a little bit. You know, it was like we said, growing up as a thriving, you know, community. Everything was downtown. Things moved out to suburbs, moved out to fifty, uh, and it's probably then the, the freezes. So it's probably no one, not unlike a lot of small towns, 
you know, uh, went through that. And it, I hate to use the term blighted, but it was just, you know, it was vacant. And mm-hmm. when it's vacant, then obviously the people on the buildings can't put money into the buildings. When they can't put money in the buildings, they deteriorate. And so that's what we went through. And I'm going to say it probably started in 1991 with Main Street. Uh, right. A lot of them got together and started that. And that was with some grants, too, for the federal that government? Was, we, yeah, they got some grants. And I don't know if you know, at one time, the FDOT actually wanted to put a, about that time, put a five-lane road, you know, Plant Street, all the way through. And wow. so everybody got together and stopped from doing that. Right. The trail was going to bypass downtown, and we, you know, they wanted to go around the, by the lake. And, no kidding. Yeah, and stop that and said, no, it's coming through town. So those things started. And then when the trail came, you know, the tracks came up, the trail came because there was no more citrus you know, packaging anymore. Mm-hmm. And so once the trail, you know, came, then it really kind of started. Then we made this, you know, community redevelopment mm-hmm. uh, district. And right. when we, we built that, I want to say the value of the buildings back then, 92, when that probably was started, was maybe $20 million. Mm-hmm. The value today is 140 Wow. 150, 160 million dollars. So all that's you know revenues coming in, we're putting back into the, into this uh, right. you know down there. So you had the uh, trail that came through, then you had the streetscape. You know, mm-hmm. we took all the pavement back because people brick streets they didn't want them. So we took the pavement back out, relayed all the bricks, then landscaped it, so made it an attractive. Then started bringing in some restaurants. And they started to fix up the Edgewater Hotel, fixed up the Edgewater. Then we started getting some retail businesses downtown. Then we started getting some office space, you know, during his time back. Uh, the Bond Building, uh, Derek and him fixed that building up. Uh, Max and him fixed the hotel. So it was just a process that involved a lot of people. So, you know, there was a lot of people that started with this and they were involved in the beginning. Uh, Ken Friends, I think, was the first person that had Main Street. Larry Kappelman, uh, Anna Bob Ellis, uh, Mr. Reeves. There's just a lot of people that I could sit here and name. Right. Our city manager at the time, Hollis Holden, you know, oh. pushed that. Mike Bohoffer did a lot. Just a lot of people, and I hate naming a few, but they're sure. Uh, you Too know, had a, you know, had a hand in this. Had a vision and mm-hmm. pushed forth with it, and keep and kept, uh, you know, just kept driving it. Yeah, I didn't know that they had to fight for the trail to stop. I yeah. didn't know that that was a thing. Most people don't. That was talked about, and they go, "No, it's got to come through downtown Winter Garden." Yeah, and, uh, you, you probably don't remember when they started the trail through there. Then we had a fence. <laughs> they had to line up those tracks. So if you wanted to go from one side of the plant to the other, you had to walk to an opening or jump it. Right. So that was there for a short, short uh, time period. Yeah, but it was pretty much an instant success that, that when the trail came through. People right? started biking right through. It took, it took a little bit of time. But a little yes, bit of time? It took a little bit of time, but yes, mm-hmm. it did. And it kept picking up, and as it picked up, more people wanted to be here. Mm-hmm. We had businesses like Paco's who had that Mexican place in uh, Winter Park. Mm-hmm. They were just a little before their time. We would go down yeah. there and eat, and there was nobody there. Downtown Browns. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. Everybody misses them. Yeah, you know? yeah. I hope he sees this and hears this again. <laughs> 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 but, um, you know, uh, just a lot of people. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it worked out. Uh, it was a vision, and it worked well. A true, serious success story. Mm-hmm. What about Fowler's Grove? When did that come, and was there a lot of people against it for it? Tell us a little bit about the history of Fowler's Grove. Fowler's Grove, when I said when uh, Fowler's and the Beckman decided to sell uh, sell that, that started an instant panic, I think, uh, mm-hmm. uh, particularly with a lot of the residential communities that were on the south side of Winter Garden, the traffic and, and what it would bring. So it got very, um, very testy. Yeah. And there was a lot of hard feelings on both sides during that. But I think the city worked and the developer and the residents all worked together on the most part to come to solutions uh, where everybody gave in, you know, some. and you know, uh, Gave a little And, and I think if you look back now, I think everybody's happy it's there. Really expanded Winter Garden, or at least the where people go. and Oh, it did. It just changed everything. You can go out there, and I'd sit and um, at the restaurants. We get My wife, we're good about saying, well, where do you think they're from? Walk over and ask them. You know, <laughs> why are you here in Winter Garden? This couple, I mean, I never forget what they talk. They come from Kissimmee every Friday yeah. to eat there. <laughs> And I'm saying, well, you know, thank you. So, you know, right. we get a lot of people from 
Claremont, Okoye, Orlando. I laugh when I get Windermere and Winter Park people. I said, "Oh, y'all know we're on the garden." Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Most growing up, they, you know, they went. They, they didn't come here much. Yeah, but, you what? <laughs> you know, so it, it's it's a great feeling, and you know, yeah. we try to talk to them, we try to meet them, and mm-hmm. and thank them for coming. That's to funny. Winter Garden. Humility. That's great. And the, the highway is just perfect right there too. It just drops them right off. It does. Yeah. It sure does. I want to talk a little bit about East Winter Garden, the East Winter Garden plan. Mm-hmm. I want to read a quote here. There's a population of about 1,800 in East Winter Garden. The average annual income for a family of four in East Winter Garden is $24,000. Pre-COVID, the unemployment rate was at a little bit above 25%, according to Habitat of Humanity. Can you tell us a little bit about your efforts, the city's efforts to help this part of our community you know, one thing I, I, I know that they say out there, this 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 initiative, One Winter Garden, mm-hmm. for so long, for so many people, it's like, oh, that's that over there. That's not really this winter garden. That's that winter garden. And you guys have done a lot to create this idea of One Winter Garden. Can you tell us about those plans and how it all got started, where it's at now, and what you feel about them? You know, it's been talked about for obviously a good while, but I think the plan really went into effect uh, started being developed in uh, 2018 and uh, put together. But the idea of One Winter Garden is you leave what we call the historic district or, you know, Dillard Street down there. and start down Plant Street is to tie it all together where you feel the same type of atmosphere. You feel, you know, you can walk, you can ride your bicycles, uh, you can have the businesses align Plant Street like that. But in doing that, you've got to get the whole community, you know, going. So. We're trying our best. It's it's getting home ownership uh, there, not you know rent. So more homes that the residents are there. They own their own homes. They feel safe. They feel secure. Uh, you want to bring it destinations there. You know where people are coming, and if they do that, that's going to bring you know dollars into that community. And if it brings dollars into the community, it's going to bring jobs into that community. So the idea is not to bring more people into the community, but to help those that we currently have living in the community now. And we were starting to do that. Center and 10th is probably the epicenter for the commercial side of that. It was when I grew up. That was, you know, the the road. So we're working with some of the business people there to get some businesses started and helping them uh, increase the size of their business there. We're working with Habitat on homes. We've got some other lots now that we bought. We're going to start... you know, building homes there. We're talking to some others and own some lots to uh, start building on those lots. And then we're looking at some of the homes that are there that are vacant and basically falling apart to clean that up. So it is, you know, downtown was a 20 year project. This is gonna be probably a long-term project, but we're getting started on it. And I think we're all enthusiastic and hopeful that this is going to, uh, to improve the life of the people that are there currently. Yeah, to give the, the the citizens of that area a chance to actually own their home and be have a, a permanent investment in that community. Now, the other part of it, the other piece of it is the streetscapes. Mm-hmm. Now, has there been, I know that there's been some plans that I understand, but has there been, plans been approved yet or is there any progress on that? There, we're working on it. There's mm-hmm. nothing yeah, final, but the idea of the streetscape is to make it an attractive uh, pedestrian friendly, bicycle friendly throughway there. Right. So yes, sir, we're working on that. Yeah, that's great. See, and that's exactly the idea. One Winter Garden. You have a downtown twenty year project. It's going to yep. take some time. We just started a few few years ago, mm-hmm. and that's going to be terrific to just bring that economy over to the east side as well. That's probably your biggest challenge in government versus private is is getting things moving and getting things completed. It just takes longer. Right, absolutely. And nothing nothing moves fast in government. We, it, it takes longer. And the city's used really good, but it's still, you know, with everything, it just takes time. Now, your wife, is she, do you guys, it sounds, you mentioned her a lot. It sounds like you guys work like a team, right? Is that, did I, did I kind of get that right? Yeah, we talk. We, to discuss we, the, as long as we were, uh, she's the head of the team, we work well As, as long as she's the head of the team. <laughs> no, we work And we that's work how well. you've been married for so many decades, because of what you just we said, as long as she's yeah, the head of the team. Years, yeah. <laughs> we started together at 15, so, you know, we grew up together, yeah. basically. You're like so the same person probably at this we, point. We, you know, we had nothing when we started, so we just grew together, grew up together. Um, yes, we, you know, yeah. uh, we, we think a little differently, obviously, on things, but that's good. 
Yeah. She's yeah. more yeah. visionary on things. I'm more dollars and, mm-hmm. and sense. So, yeah, we, we talk a lot about things. Yeah, and, you find the balance. And I will honestly tell you, there's probably a couple of places in Winter Garden. When she's in the car, I avoid the road. I'll go oh, three blocks out of the way because... <laughs> <laughs> She'll go, you know, why'd you do what? No. You know, so, but she's very good. So, yeah, I talk about her a lot because That's she wonderful. does. She's a good young lady. So where do you guys drive around Winter Garden? Where do you guys go to eat? And I mean, I don't want to give away your spot or anything, but I don't, I don't mind, what places you know? do you like? And We eat at Fowler's Grove. We, you know, out there in all those restaurants, we mm-hmm. eat all the ones downtown. Yeah. Uh, you know, every restaurant down there, we pretty much, uh, you know, uh, you know, frequent. Yeah, and we always we always have. We very seldom go outside of Winter Garden to eat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have too many good places. That's here good. And too that's many a good, good mayor. See, that's what people like. Yeah, yeah. Or I understand you're not on social media. I mean, I tried to look for you on Facebook. I couldn't find anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, yeah, and I probably same thing with emails. I used to tell our people at work when they get mad. I said, "Go ahead, type out your email, sit back and read it, then hit delete." then go walk over and talk to the person. Right. And I think social media and all that, it's easy to put comments on there when you're not facing the person. So I have never been on social media. I've never been on Twitter or Snapchat or things I hear my grandkids talking about. And quite honestly, I have no intention of ever being on any of that. I am out and about in the community, my home phone number, is the number of you call City Hall for me? It rings at my house, <laughs> so I'm easy to find. That's great, <laughs> belly belly to belly, as they say. Yes. Yeah, too many people. They're the, what they call them, keyboard warriors. Yes. They get a lot of gusto behind the keyboard, and you're right; it's not healthy. No. It's definitely that's not who we need to be in Winter Garden. So no. I, I I'd really, rather talk to the people. Yeah. Quite honestly, I don't have the time anyway. I've got, uh, you know, my wife and I got six beautiful grandkids, and mm-hmm. uh, that's my life. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I do. <laughs> Talk a little bit about the position you hold in terms of its history. Some past mayors. Do you have any past mayors that you look to and maybe a favorite mayor, you know? Yeah, and, and, and I've served, I guess, with three. But I, Bob Barber started a lot of this um, when he got him back in 86. Um, Bob was administrator at the hospital also. But he was the mayor, and uh, he was, I think, for four years. But um, he came to me one day and says, Let's do light up Winter Garden. Oh. And we started that in 87. He goes, um, let's do the 4th of July celebration. Mm-hmm. And he started that back then. So Bob wow. had a lot of, uh, I think, good ideas. We used to have, in a stop, we used to have joint uh, commission meetings with um, our meetings with City of Okoy back then. Really? In fact, I just found, uh, we were going through a cloth one, I found a, an agenda from one. With, no kidding. Uh, when Tom Ison, Rusty Johnson was on the commission, <laughs> and uh, but we we'd have a once a year we'd have a uh, a joint meeting. Wow! And um, so I think Bob did a lot of uh, uh, brought a lot of uh, pulling the community together, pulling together these themed events. And the first light of Winter Garden, fifty people, seventy five really? people there. No kidding. You know, and uh, takes time. now we look at it. Yeah, oh my gosh. Mr. Spears was on there. He's a good mm-hmm. you know good Christian man, a good good yep. person. Enjoyed uh, everything he did as mayor, and then Mr. Quisenberry. He was a tremendous man. I actually, we were Masons, and no matter how long you knew him, he talked to you like you were the most important thing in front of him. He'd share everything with you. The first time I met him, I thought I knew him for a hundred years. Oh yeah, like this is just how that he had that spirit about him. Just a tremendous person. Yes, he was, and mm-hmm. it was. Uh, we'd go to his house and visit with him. It's just, uh, it's it a shame. He yeah. was a good man, and uh, yeah. you know, we miss him. Absolutely. But, you know, I served on the commission, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know how many years, quite a few years with him yeah. on the commission. And, uh, you know, um, he was very community minded and you uh, knew where he stood on things. Yes, yes, oh, yes, he did. I remember, like I said in Lodge, I mean, we all knew where he stood. You and he would stand to, to tell you, too. Uh, <laughs> and that's good. Yes. That's good. You need that passion. You have all the, the character virtues there. That's then you have the passion, it's a good thing. <laughs> it, it is. And I think he fought along the lines at work. We used to say a lot of things, and it's amazing what can be accomplished when you don't care who gets the credit. Right. That's one thing you start on yeah. board, and the other was you have a good management team when you use we and us instead of I and they. Yes. So, that's great. you know, that's it, great. it's, yeah, and I think he brought a lot of that too to mm-hmm. the, uh, you mm-hmm. know, to the table on that. So, yep. I think if you look at Mr. Quisenberry, that come to mind, you know, I think he uh, loved God. Yes. He loved his family. Yeah. And uh, he loved his town. Is there anything that you want to 
tell to the people anything, any initiatives, any kind of communication you want to send to them? Well, I think coming down the pike, you're going to see that our boundaries are pretty much established. We'll continue to annex the enclaves in the city Winter Garden. Diller Street will get started, and there's both sides on the roundabouts. Every traffic engineer we have talked to, and we've been working on this for years, and they, the roundabouts, they promise, will move faster. So you'll have them at Story, Smith, and Plant. Nice. So that's coming, and it's going to be a hassle. And it's going to be difficult for a while, but we'll do the best we can with that. We've got a couple of uh, new buildings coming. I think you're going to see some restaurants in town, uh, a little more office space, and God willing, we will continue to grow in a, in a good, orderly fashion, best for our community, low density. Very good. Well, God bless you. Thank you for serving the community. Thank you for leading us, and thank you for being on the program. Thank you very much for having me, and uh, God bless our community, too. Thank you very much. Thank you.